praise the Lord. Good evening, everyone. Wherever you are upon the surface of the earth is Pastor Shola Olawi. And whatever you are doing, I'm excited that I'm connected to you, even right now. And it's Wednesday, our monthly breaking of the fast, the virtual service, and surely the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. So wherever you may be, I just want you to know that the Spirit of the Lord is right there with you. It's connected to you. And please stay connected and participate fully in the service. Don't let anything pass you by. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Eternal rock of ages. Eternal rock of ages. We worship you. We adore you. Eternal rock of ages. Eternal rock of ages. Eternal rock of ages. Eternal rock of ages. We worship you. We adore you. Eternal rock of ages. Eternal rock of ages. Eternal rock of ages. Eternal rock of ages. We worship you. We adore you. Eternal rock of ages. Thank you, Jesus. This evening is very important because the Lord said we should pray for our children. He says to me, pray for your children. So the prayer is so important that I want to quickly, I uh, want you to quickly write the names of your children. You write the names of your children on the sheet of paper. Just quickly write it down. I've typed my on my iPad. So quickly write it down. Type it on your iPad. Just write their name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I want you to quickly write their name. Tonight, the focus of our prayer is, Oh Lord, let your mercy speak over my children. The Lord said we should pray for our children. And while he says so, I don't question him, but I know that mercy covers all that God wants to say. And uh, I have faith in God that whatever it is, the reason why God is saying we should pray for them, there will be an overturn, an overturn of those things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Concerning our children, there will be an overturn in the name of Jesus. Amen. This evening, the mercy of God will speak for all our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, as much as God has given us. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Numbers chapter 14, verse 18 to 20. Numbers chapter 14, verse 18 to 20. I'm reading from two, uh, two versions, a, a New King James Version and NLT. The first one is the New King James Version. The Lord is long-suffering and abundant in mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, but he by no means clears the guilty, visiting the guilty of the fathers, the guilt of the father on the children to the third and fourth generation. Pardon the iniquity of these people. I pray according to the greatness of your mercy, just as you have forgiven these people from Egypt even until now. Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word. Amen. Amen. Numbers chapter 14, verse 18 to 20. It was Moses that was dialoguing with God. We are, we are reading. Numbers chapter 14, verse 18 to 20. Reading from NLT again. The Bible said, The Lord is slow to anger and filled with unfailing love, which is mercy, forgiving every kind of sin and rebellion, and rebellion. But he does not excuse the guilty. He lays the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected. Even children in the third and fourth generations. In keeping with your magnificent unfailing love, please pardon the sins of these people just as you have forgiven them ever since they left Egypt. Then the Lord said, I will pardon them as you have requested. Hallelujah. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Just as I say, Moses and God, we are dialoguing here. The children of Israel sinned against God, and God was angry. At the root of every problem in a man's life is sin. 
When God said we should pray for our children, that is why I had to say, okay, let's pray for mercy. The children of Israel actually knows how to seek the face of God. Whenever they sinned against God, they know what to do. They know how to run back to God and seek for forgiveness. Moses was now praying for them here. And you see in that verse 17, he said, And now I pray, let the power of my God be great, just as you have spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and abundant in mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression. But he by no means clears the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the father on the children to the third and fourth generation. God, we have mercy on our children in the name of Jesus. I just know that the Lord will prove that his power is great. Because that is what Moses was saying. He said, Lord, please prove that your power is great. As you have claimed. For you say, the Lord is slow to anger and abundant in mercy. From today, the Lord will stretch his hand of mercy to our children. If it is our sins or our parents' sins as parents that is affecting their life, the Lord will have mercy this evening in the name of Jesus. We will receive mercy in the name of Jesus. And if it is generational sin this evening, the blood of Jesus that speak mercy, we raise it in the mighty name of Jesus. But he does not excuse the guilty. As we read from that uh, uh, new, um, uh, from NLT, he says there, he says, he does not excuse the guilty. He lays the sins of the parent upon their children. So God does not play with what we are talking about. He will not excuse anyone that is guilty over the matter of our children. I know that. Anyone that is guilty, God will not excuse them in the name of Jesus. He said, we avenge them speedily. He lays the sins of the parent upon their children. Their entire family is affected when this is happened. Even children in the third generation to fourth generation, maybe the family you came out from, they have done something that angered God and uh, and the anger of God is at the root of what is happening in the life of your children. Today, the mercy of God will roll them away and the anger of the Lord will cease in Jesus' name. Amen. In Exodus 26, he said, But showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandment. The thousand God is speaking about, he, uh, he speaking about here is not exempting your own children or my children. Amen? Amen. In Psalm 115, verse 14, he said, May the Lord richly bless both you and your children. The Lord will bless our children in the name of Jesus. He will bless us and our children in Jesus' name. So this scripture will find full expression in the life of our children and grandchildren in Jesus' name. You see, the plan of God for our children is that they should move forward in life. That's why he says, when you look at that Psalm 115, verse 14, in New King James Version, say, may the Lord give you increase more and more, you and your children. Amen? Amen. So the plan of God is for our children to move forward in life. Our children are not born to be stagnated. Amen? Amen. You have wife and you have husband. In fact, you have children. It is compulsory that our own children that are due for marriage should get married. It is also compulsory that our children that should also bring forth children should bring forth children. It is also compulsory that our children should be successful. It is also compulsory that our children that have no job should have job. Our children that are not Christians should become Christians. He said, may the Lord give you increase more and more, you and your children. And in Isaiah 14, 13, he said, all your children shall be taught by the Lord. And grace shall be the peace of your children. Our children will be taught by the Lord in Jesus' name. As you pray today, whatever is affecting the peace of our children will be consumed by fire in the name of Jesus. And all the arrow that God fired into their life as sickness will fly out in the name of Jesus. So our prayer focus is, Lord, let your mercy speak over our children. When mercy speak over our children, what happens? They achieve what they are made should achieve in 10 years, in 3 years, or less, with success. When mercy speak over our children, everywhere they go, doors open for them in their own accord. When mercy speak over our children, excellent spirit manifests in them. So why are we praying that God's mercy should speak over our children as we go into this prayer this evening? The reason is because the devil is harvesting the youth and eventually terminate them untimely. Harvesting them all over. Today you see 16-year-old uh, children with gone. Some of them are being caught for robbery. 16-year-old children. To let you know that the devil is at work. 
Young children make, uh, uh, want to make <laughs> uh, cannabis this day as if, it's re as if it's nothing to write home about. You see, even female, they are now seen smoking cannabis. Amen? A lot of our children are drug addicted. Let's not deceive ourselves. They are under our nose. But a lot of them, they are drug addicts. Satan is after them because he knows they bear the light of the future for us. That is why we need to pray for them. We can send our children to the best school in the world. You can send them to Harvard. If we don't uphold them in prayer, suddenly the enemy will strike them. That will not be the portion of our children in the name of Jesus. Many children today are in depression and a lot of parents are living in denial. Many children today are suicidal. A lot of children are living, parents are living in denial. Many children today are going around with as, as, as house for demons and a lot of parents are what? Are living in denial. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Firstly, I want us to begin this prayer. I want us to begin to thank God for the glorious children he has, give, or he has given to you. Say, Father, I thank you for the glorious children you gave me. Thank you for the great future ahead of them. I want you to open your mouth and pray. I want you to thank the Lord. If possible, put your hands on that paper and begin to touch the names of those children and say, Father, thank you for Eniola. Father, thank you for Tola. Thank you, Father, for these children are glorious children. And the grandchildren you will give to me. Thank you Father, because they are glorious children. Oh Lord, I thank you for the glorious future ahead of them. Oh Lord, I worship you. Oh Lord, I bless you. I want you to thank you for the glorious children. Oh Father, that you have given me. Glorious grandchildren. Oh God, Father, that is set. Oh Lord, Father, to come. Lord, I give you all the glory. Father, I thank you. I want you to begin to thank him for his mercy that has been showing forth in, the, in their lives. The mercy of God in their lives. They've been going around. They've been doing a lot of things. God's mercy has been showing forth in their life. Lord, we thank you for your mercy that is showing forth in the life of our children. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we worship you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Say, Father, thank you for not permitting the will of the enemy to come to pass in their lives. That is why today I can still stand. I can still pray. No matter because everything about the children. Oh, Lord, Father, you have put it to God, Father, that the will of the enemy is not coming to pass. I want you to thank him. I want you to bless him. I want you to thank God for how he has been helping you to take care of them beyond your imagination. Father, thank you for helping me to take care of my children beyond my imagination. Thank you. You gave them to me as gifts, but you have been helping me. 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 Thank you, Father, for our children. In Jesus' name, we pray. I want you to pray earnestly. Even though you are listening to me, you are not happy concerning the happening in the lives of any of your children. Appreciate the Lord concerning that child. That your hope is not lost over your child. So you are going to tell the Lord, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, teach me how to intercede for my children this evening. Holy Ghost, as we go into this prayer, I position myself. Teach me how to intercede. When he teaches you, he may say you should stand up. He may say you should sit down. When we be doing the prayer, he may say mention their name. Father, in the name of Jesus, teach us how to intercede for our children today. In Jesus' name we pray. From the scripture we read, we have seen there that even the sin of the father and that of even the parent or the generation ahead of the children can actually affect the lives of our children. We are going to ask for God's mercy over our personal sin as parents, over our parental sin over the, the, uh, in their life that is, that is affecting their life that the Lord will show mercy. Say, Father, father. in the name of Jesus, I ask for your mercy over every sin that our children double into, that is affecting their lives, or the sin we parents committed, or generational sin that is speaking in the, in the life of our children. Lord, forgive them and deliver them. I want you to ask God, Father, even the sin of the children that they double into, Father, we ask for forgiveness. The one week the parents committed that is affecting their life, Father, we ask, oh God, Father, for forgiveness. The generational sin speaking in their life, Father, Father, forgive and deliver them in your compassion. Lord, deliver them. 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 In Jesus' name, we pray. Please be ready to pray. A particular woman cried out one time. She said, please, pastor, help me. My daughter in the UK, my daughter in the UK says she wants to become a man. 
And I said, what have you observed? She said she always want to wear men's shoe with lace up. She always want to wear shirts. And sometimes she want to put tie on her shirt. And the type of shirt she will wear will be the men's shirt. She said she just said, okay, maybe she just liked it. And after a while, she came and said, mommy, I want to become a, a man. Hmm. You know, something had happened around that area. Something got distorted. Something came in. We are going to tell the Lord. A power came in to manipulate that child. You are going to tell the Lord, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, every power that wants to manipulate or is manipulating any of our children away from you, O Lord, or to snatch them away from your presence. Lord, we declare, let them lose their hold and be arrested. Let them lose their hold and be arrested. Let them lose their hold and be arrested. Any power that want to manipulate our children away from you, O God, or to snatch them away from your presence. O Father, let them lose their hold. O Lord, to snatch them away from the presence of the Lord. Father, let them lose their hold and be arrested. 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 In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. A young lady came to me to see me one time. Very beautiful looking girl. I think three years ago. When she came to the office, I don't know her, but she insisted she wanted to see me alone. So when she saw me alone, I was she wanted to see me alone. Only me, you know, sometimes I have the pastors to sit with me, one to intercede together, two for security reason. So she they sat with me to, I mean, they wanted to, she says she wants to see me alone. So because she's a beautiful girl, she came in and she sat down and we started talking. She told me she was introduced to drugs barely a year ago. And I say, who? She said her friend. And she's just 17. And she couldn't get herself out of it. She couldn't get herself out of it. She was looking for help. She was crushed. I don't know her mother. The mother will not know what this girl is going on. And I say, your parents, do they know? No. And she lives in the house. Do you do it in the house? She said, yes. How do you do it? She was telling me. I'll lock my room and enter. And if they are calling me, she will tell them she's sleeping. And when she come out, she'll be very normal. Do everything in the house. That they, I said, does your mother think that something is wrong? She said, no, my mother feels that I'm a good girl. Everything is good with me. The Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord not allow the devil hide under our nose and be eating us up in Jesus' name. Amen. That is a destiny that the devil is eating under the mother and the father's nose. Our children need prayer. It is beyond them. We are going to tell the Lord, say, Father, Father. in the name of Jesus, in your mercy, crush every power that want to take away my children from your presence, O oh Lord. Every power. Pray that prayer again. That want to take my children, O oh God, Father, from your presence. Father, crush the power. That want to manipulate. Crush the power. That want to separate them. Crush the power. In the name of Jesus, crush the power. Crush the power. In Jesus' name we pray. That guy say, our friends introduce her. Do you hear that? You are going to tell the Lord, say, Father, Father. In, the in the name of Jesus, let your mercy speak and separate our children from evil friends. I want you to talk to the Lord if you want to personalize it. If there's any of your children that you know is going out with friends, that you don't say, Father, in your mercy, let your mercy speak because of your name. Separate this child. Mention the name of the child from this evil friend this child is going out with. Father, separate our children from every evil friend they have in the name of Jesus. Every evil friend they have in the name of Jesus. Father, because if they continue to company with the evil children, sooner or later they will start inflicting our children. Father, in the name of Jesus, separate them in your mercy. Separate them in your mercy. Separate them in your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to go to the next one, but the Holy Spirit just gave this word. I want us to pray that, Father, detach any of our children, any of our children, oh Lord, Father, that is attached to any evil child now. Any of our children attached to any evil child. Father, detach. Father, detach. Father, detach. Whatever connect them, let it begin Let it begin to disconnect them. Whatever brought the connectivity, let it begin to separate them. Father, detach, detach. Any of our children attached to any evil child. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. You know, sometimes, it's just that the enemy will just arise to torment parents through their children. The enemy will just arise to want to torment you through your child. We are going to pray and we are going to tell the Lord, say, Father, Father. 
in the name of Jesus. Neutralize the power of every evil. Or it neutralize the power of every evil one. Tormenting me through my children. Every power, O oh Lord Father, from the coast. Every power from the east, from the north, from the south, from the west. That want to be tormenting me through my children. Father, neutralize the power. No matter where the power is gotten from. Father, neutralize it. Lord, neutralize it. Lord, neutralize it. Lord, neutralize it. Lord, neutralize it. I want you to talk to the Lord. Everything in the life of my children, any of my child, that represent torment. Lord, neutralize it. Lord, neutralize it. Lord, neutralize it. Lord, neutralize it. No, neutralize it. I want you to talk to the Lord. Lord, neutralize it. Lord, neutralize it. Lord, neutralize it. In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to be casting out the spirit of rebellion in the life of our children. It is not of the Lord. And that is one of the sin they might be committing that is making that the mercy of God must speak on their behalf. Because the Bible speaks against rebellion, even in the life of children. And it has consequences. We are going to tell the Lord, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we cast out the spirit of rebellion out of our children in your mercy. Detach them from rebellion. Every rebellious nature in them, detach them. Inherent rebellion that they have inherited in one area or the other. Father, we cast it out of their life. We cast it out of their life. Rebellion and stubbornness, we cast you out. We cast you out. We cast you out. Every spirit that does not want our children to listen to us when we talk to them. I want to talk. Is there any of your children that is stubborn, that is rebellious? Begin to mention the name of that child and begin to rebuke the spirit of rebellion. Father, in the life of our children, we rebuke the spirit of rebellion. You spirit of rebellion, we cast you out. Ah, we rebuke you and cast you out. We cast you out. We cast you out. You will no longer torment our children. In the name of Jesus, you will no longer torment them. I want you to talk to the Lord. Father, we cast out the spirit of masturbation, the spirit of masturbation in the life of our children in any shape or form. The spirit of masturbation in the life of our children in any shape or form. We cast it out. We cast it out. We cast it out. We cast it out. Father, our children will only house the Holy Spirit. Every spirit that does not glorify God. Oh, oh Jesus, put the head under our feet in the name of Jesus and Lord deliver our children in Jesus name we pray some of the children are operating under evil authority. You are going to tell the Lord, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, in your mercy, destroy every evil authority that is operating in the life of our children. Every evil authority that is over our children, Father, destroy it. Father, destroy it. Father, destroy it. In the name of Jesus, evil authority that is working over our children, destroy it, O Lord. Destroy it, O Lord. Destroy it, O Lord. Destroy it, O Lord. It, o Lord. Every evil authority, Maroko shikale de zentere bodia. In Jesus' name we pray. Sometimes they hear voices and they operate through that voice. And you see them speaking out what they are hearing. It is an evil authority at work. You are going to pray that prayer again. Father, the manifestation of evil authority in the life of our children. If, you, if there's any of your child in that room, please mention the name. And say, in the name of Jesus, as I'm ending this fasting today, I put an end to the operation of that authority. I stand under the cover of mercy and the authority of Jesus to arrest every evil authority. I want you to talk to the Lord. Every evil authority. Speaking in the life of our children. In the name of Jesus. Father, we say, Lord, Lord, we speak against every evil authority. We cast it out. We nullify it by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sometimes the evil authority can be open into their life. Either through us, but we are going to pray. Or even through themselves. You are going to tell the Lord, say, Father, Father. in the name of Jesus, in your mercy, shut every door. I open. Or my husband open. Or the children open by themselves that gave access to evil authority. Father, shut it up, O oh God, Father, in your mercy. Every door that was open for evil authority to penetrate into their lives, Father, shut it up by your mercy. In your mercy, Lord, let it be short. 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 In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I want you to please, that paper you wrote, put your hands on it now. And you are going to be telling the Lord that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let his mercy evidently speak. 
over this my child throughout her lifetime, over this my child throughout his lifetime. I want you to pray. That is the last prayer I want to pray. I want you to tell the Lord, Father, concerning this my son, concerning this my daughter, let your mercy, O God, Father, speak throughout her life. Let your mercy speak. Now lay your hands on the list you have, with, you have written down. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, let your mercy speak. Let your mercy speak. Let your mercy speak. Father, in the name of Jesus, over in your life, let your mercy speak. Let your mercy speak. Let your mercy speak in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your mercy speak. Over in your life, over Tola, let your mercy speak. Let your mercy speak. Let your mercy speak. Let your mercy speak in the name of Jesus. Begin to tell the Lord, let your mercy speak. You, my children, evil statement that was issued into your life by the blood of Jesus, I cancel it. Begin to cancel every issue statement issued over your children. Mention their name one by one. And your Allah, I declare evil statement mentioned upon you in the name of Jesus. I cancel it by the blood of Jesus. Tola, evil statement mentioned upon you. Oh, I cancel it by the blood of Jesus. Mention their name by the blood of Jesus. Every evil statement that was issued into your life, that moved your life into the realm that God has not ordained in the name of Jesus. I cancel it by the blood of Jesus. You, my children, hear the word of the Lord. You are my future. Receive power to succeed in life. Receive power to succeed in life. Receive power to succeed in life. I declare because Isaiah 54, I declare concerning you. So therefore, the Holy Ghost will be your teacher. And your La and Tola, Holy Ghost will be your teacher. Father, in your mercy, let the Holy Ghost be the teacher of my children. I declare today that in your mercy, multiply your peace in their life. Permit no sickness. Oh Lord, that we end in death to be their portion in the name of Jesus. Permit no sickness that we end in death to be their portion in the name of Jesus. Permit no sickness. I want you to declare today. I said today in the name of Jesus, I declare as a father or a mother that the Lord will increase my children more and more. I declare as a mother. The Lord will increase and allow and taller more and more in the name of Jesus. The Lord will increase them more and more in the name of Jesus. The Lord will increase them more and more in the name of Jesus. The Lord will increase them more and more. More and more, Lord Father, you will increase them more and more in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus, the Son of God, we believe in you. We believe in you. Oh, yes. Jesus, the Son of God, we believe in you. We believe in you. Jesus, you are the son of God. We believe in you. Prove yourself faithful in the lives of our children. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please get your communion item ready. As we share the word, I will partake of the communion. Our theme for the month is supernatural change by Jesus, the author and the finisher. And thank God we have spoken about that on Monday. And the anchor scripture is John 10.10. 10, NLT, the thief's purpose is to steal and to kill and to destroy. He said, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Our children will enjoy a rich and satisfying life. We will enjoy a rich and satisfying life in the name of Jesus. So tonight, I'm sharing on this topic Blessed by Christ Jesus. On Monday we shared Jesus, the author and the finisher. Blessed by Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. He says, I have come to give them life more abundant. Amen. Amen. What does it mean? What does it mean? I came to give them life more abundantly. What does it mean? Number one, from our scripture, John 10.10. 10. It also means eternal life. Amen? Life more abundantly in him means eternal life. Life more abundantly in him means full life. It also means rich and satisfying life, as we read from NLT. 
And it also means a blessed life. When you access life more abundantly, your life is blessed. Jesus is saying, I came that you might receive the blessed life. Amen? Amen. That you might receive what? The blessed life. Remember, when uh, 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 Adam and Eve sinned against God in the Garden of Eden, man lost the blessing. A man came under the curse in Genesis 1.28. God says, then God blessed them. Hear this now. God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the bed of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Man received blessing in Genesis 1.28, but in Genesis 3.17, but after man sinned, <laughs> what happened? God cut the ground because of the sin of man. In Genesis 3.13. Amen? Amen? But Jesus came, he died and resurrected. So that the blessing that man lost after man sinned in the Garden of Eden might be restored. So the blessing is not just things, but the blessing is a spiritual life, which is what I want to talk about. When we talk about this blessing, they are not things. They are not car. They are not houses. They are not perishable things. But it is about spiritual life. That's what we want to talk about. About our spiritual life. The Bible tells us in Psalm 133 verse 3. I'm reading from King James Version. Psalm 133 verse 3 says, As the dew of Hermon, as the dew of as the dew of Ammon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing. What is the blessing? Even life forevermore. That is the blessing. Even life forevermore. It is about full life in Christ. So the blessing is not originally things, but blessing is eternal life. Amen? Amen. So Jesus said, I came to give you eternal life that contains the full deposit of the blessing. The Bible also tells us in Ephesians 1.3 from King James Version. Ephesians 1.3. He said, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Let's look at this in the Bible in basic English. BBE. Bible in basic English. That Ephesians chapter 3, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 3. Say, praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us every blessing of the Spirit in the heavens in Christ. Every blessing of the Spirit in the heavens in Christ. Eternal life is the container of every blessing. Eternal life is the container of every blessing. So blessed be the Lord, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us every blessing. That is why the package of eternal life is in John 10.10. 10. The Amplified of it says, let me read the Amplified. The package of eternal life, eternal life is in John 10.10. 10. And let's read it in the Amplified. It says, it says, you may have life and have it overflowing. That is life that is full, abundant life that is overflowing. So everything called blessing is inside eternal life. That is why no believer ought to be depressed. We ought not to be depressed. No believer ought to be tired of life, no matter what is happening. If you are a believer, you are not supposed to be tired. Because eternal life will be springing something in you that you will not be tired of life. The doctor give you a negative report. As a believer, you are not because of it getting tired of life. You are not sitting down on that report and getting, getting hopeless. No believer ought to be defeated. No believer ought to be weak. No believer ought to be hopeless. Why? Because you have eternal life. That is a life inside of you that can do what? That can negate those things and make you, despite those things being there, you are not taking it in. You have the fullness of the blessing of God in you. You know what? You term blessing you can see somebody that is a child of God who feels he's not blessed and he see a billionaire that is blessed than him and that billionaire is not born again. Do you know that in the ends of affairs in heaven, that one that is born again is blessed than the one that have the billions we are talking about? The Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' name. Yeah. I declare everything contrary to eternal life. As you receive this revelation, the yoke shall be broken off your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Revelation chapter 5 verse 12. Revelation 5 12. The Bible says, 
the Bible says to us, part of, uh, the Bible mentioned here, part of what Jesus died for was blessing. Saying with a loud voice, Revelation 5.12, it's showing us that part of what Jesus died for is this blessing we are talking about. Saying with a, with a loud voice, what is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings? Amen? Amen. So all of these are inside eternal life. You see that blessing, power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, and glory is all inside more abundantly. In eternal life. So when you receive Jesus, you have received the blessed life. When you receive Jesus, you have received the blessed life. What a joy. When you receive Jesus, you have received the blessed life. I don't know the condition you are as you are watching me. But if you have Jesus, the heaven says you are blessed. Even if you don't believe me, the heaven declares that you are blessed. And when you are blessed, that means that condition cannot remain the same. Because the blessing came before the curse. And afterwards, blessing came again to swallow the curse. So no matter what is happening, the blessing of God can swallow whatever is around your life. The Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' name. Now, what does it mean to be blessed? To be blessed means to be connected to the blessed God. To be connected to, be, to the blessed God. No matter what it is, if you are connected to God, no matter who leads your life, if you have God, you have more than enough. One God is more than the whole population in the whole world. So throughout the Bible, anyone connected to God is called blessed. For instance, the Bible said, blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. And it is only a man that is connected to God that will not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. That's Psalm 1, and I think verse 2. So to be blessed means to be connected to the blessed God. And when you are connected to the blessed God, his blessing becomes a reality in your life. The Lord give us understanding in Jesus' name. Number two, what does it mean to be blessed? To be blessed also means to be endowed with benefits of God. Benefit of God. He said, no good thing with him will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. He will with all the good things from you. Benefit of God. When you receive eternal life, you are connected to the blessing of God and you are endowed with the blessings of God for all eyes to see. The blessings will be seen for all eyes to see. Number three, what does it mean to be blessed? It also means to be empowered to live the blessed life. To be empowered to live the blessed life. You are empowered to live the blessed life that, that God has given to you. A blessed life that will stand as a blessing wherever you or she goes. A blessed life that will bless everybody around them. By this revelation, you are empowered to live the blessed life in Jesus. The Lord will give you understanding deeper and deeper in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, number four. To be blessed also means to be favored and fortunate. To be favored and fortunate. Wherever you go, because you are blessed... People follow by themselves to favor you. You just see yourself, whatever you want to do, it will look like ah, she's very fortunate because you are blessed. What then can we get from this light that God is giving us today? What are the things we need to note from this light? Number one, number one thing to note, we are blessed in Christ Jesus. You just need to know it. If you are a child of God, you are blessed. Tell yourself, say, I am blessed. You are blessed in Christ Jesus, no matter what it is. The fact that God has blessed us in Christ Jesus, no matter what is happening, let it always ring in your heart that God has blessed us in Christ Jesus. God has evoked and impacted my life with his blessing. So whatever is happening is just passing through. I will soon be through out of it. Amen? Amen. That I'm just passing through, I will soon be through. Secondly, what are we to note? The second thing we need to note here is that we are blessed with all things in Christ Jesus. All things that is in Christ Jesus. The Bible says in Ephesians 1, 3 that we read, that blessed be the God of our Father, the God of our Father, the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We are blessed with all things. We are blessed with strength to overcome our flesh. We are blessed with understanding of the word of God. We are blessed to come before the throne of grace and call the Father anytime. 
We are blessed with every good thing about life that can be attracted to us because everything about life, if we look at Jesus doing his, doing his earthly ministry, when hunger came, because he's a, he is a carrier of blessing, there was provision instantly. When you are blessed, things will come your way. You may not have a dime with you. But things will come your way and the blessings of the Lord in you will attract the solution to them. And you will not know how you get the money. I've had people say a couple of times, this happened to me, I don't have a dime, I don't know where the money came from. That is the blessing of the Lord, attracting answers to your need. Praise the Lord. The Lord will give us understanding. You'll be so blessed that some people will be asking you to borrow their money. But they don't know that it's the blessing of God that is overshadowing your life. Number three, what are we supposed to note? We are blessed always continuously in Christ Jesus. That means that blessing is just for a, it's not for a season. No. It is always, it is continuous. We are blessed all the time in Christ Jesus. So whenever you are going, you see a child of God, always know that you are seeing a blessed man walking. A blessed woman walking. No matter what you said about the person, that person is a child of God, that person is blessed. Amen? The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. We are blessed for all, all the time in Christ. We need to know that you are blessed throughout your lifetime. And we need to know that I am blessed and that blessing is irreversible. I am blessed. That blessing is for life. I am blessed. That blessing is continuous. So it means I'm blessed irrever irrever irreversible in Christ Jesus. In Numbers chapter 23 verse 20. Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he had blessed, and I cannot reverse it. That is Balaam speaking. <laughs> he was an agent of the devil that received money to curse the children. To, he was to curse the children of Israelites. But he can't curse them because the blessing upon them is irreversible. <laughs> so here we can see that it is possible to be blessed continuously and always. So if the Old Testament declare the blessing that is irreversible. Then imagine the blessing of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Imagine that. It cannot be reversed. So if you are in Christ, you are blessed always, no matter what. In Genesis 24, 1, he said, And Abraham was old and was stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Blessed him in all things. Abraham was blessed in connection to God. In fact, he was called Abraham of God. Abraham was blessed with material things. He was blessed with relationship with God. If Abraham in Old Testament could be blessed with all things, how much more we that have eternal life in Christ? So you must first believe in your heart that you are blessed in Christ Jesus. That's what I want you to take home today. You are blessed in Christ Jesus. That's what I want you to swallow inside of you. You are blessed in Christ Jesus. You are blessed with all things in Christ Jesus. You are blessed with healing. You are blessed with honor. You are blessed with favor. You are blessed always. Don't lose hope if you are not visibly seeing the blessing yet. You are to be conscious of the blessing. Just let the revelation be quickened in you. And sooner or later it will soon manifest in your life. Let it be quickened in your spirit. Amen? Amen. Number four. What does it mean to be blessed? Uh, what, what, uh, what are we to note? We are blessed beyond being the cause. We are blessed never to be cursed. We are uncursable, if there is any English like that. <laughs> we are uncursable in Christ Jesus. When you are genuinely in Christ, hear me, oh, I say genuinely. When you are genuinely in Christ, you are blessed beyond the curse of any evil. Numbers 22, 12 says, And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. But what did Balaam did? Balaam collected money. After God had spoken to him, he still went to go and curse the people of God. But he got there. He couldn't curse them. The curse did not work. So if that is what has happened to people in the Old Testament, how much more are we that are living in, God's, in God because Jesus dwells in us? We are living in God because Jesus dwells in us. Jesus is inside of me now. Amen? Amen. And I declare, I take authority over anything that looks like a curse in your life. To be canceled by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Amen. And by the power of resurrection, as you receive this revelation, no curse is permitted to continue to work against your life in Jesus' name. Amen. 
What have we said? You are blessed in Christ Jesus. You are blessed with all things in Christ Jesus. You are blessed always continuously in Christ Jesus. You are blessed beyond being cursed by anyone. The Lord will give us understanding. Amen. As we round up. How did Jesus secure the blessing for us? How? Number one. Jesus paid the price to reconcile and reconnect us back to the blessed God. You know, I told us that one of the areas of us to be blessed for us to be connected to him. So there was this connection. He paid the price to connect us back to him. John 14, 6. John 14, 6. Says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So he's the one who connects us back. And in Ephesians chapter 15, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15 to 16, and verse 18, three verses. Having abolished in his flesh the, em the enmity that is that is, the law of commandment contained in ordinances. So as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. The enmity. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. So enmity gone And we are back to relationship with God. The enmity is gone. We are back to relationship with God. Number two, Jesus made us son and heirs of God with right to inherit the blessings of God. He did it and made us sons and heirs of God with right to, the, to inherit the blessings of God. That gives us the right to all that God has in him. Can you imagine God? He has everything in him. And if we are heirs to, to this God... We have the rights to everything that God is carrying as God. Amen. Amen. In John 1, 2, I say, but as many are receiving to them, he gave the right to become the children of God. To those who believe in his name. You know every child has rest to whatever his father is having. So, and through Jesus, you have been made the children of God, and we have right to everything God has. To them, he has given the right to become children of God. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 17, Romans chapter 8, verse 17, in King James Version, he said, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, Joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. And heirs is person who is next to inherit. When we say somebody is a he is an heir, he is person who is next to inherit. So by eternal life, we have a right in God's blessing. And I have a right in God's blessing. First Peter chapter 3, verse 9 says, No returning evil for evil, or reviving for reviving, but on the contrary, blessing. Knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit blessing. The day you answer the call of salvation, you are called to inherit. That inheritance we speak in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three, he destroyed all curses and spells on the cross. What are those curses? The curse of God, the one that came through God, the one that came the curse of man, <laughs> the curse of dev the devil, the curse of demon, and even the curse that you place upon yourself. Jesus did what? He destroys it. Galatians 3 and 13. He said, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree. Cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree. Why was he made a curse? Through Jesus. Why? Was he made a cross? He was made a cross so that you and I can be what? Can be blessed. And his blessing is coming upon everyone. Lastly, how did he do it? What are we supposed to note? We are living models of the blessed life. We are supposed to be living models of the blessed life. We are the light of the world. You know the Bible says we are the light of the world. A city set on the hill that cannot be hidden. And surely... Our blessed life will manifest in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to pray free prayers before we partake of the communion. You are going to tell the Lord, say, Father, Father I am your child. I am your child. Whatever, is life, Whatever is in my life that is not making your blessing to manifest in my life, Lord, I release myself into your hands. Let it be totally taken away. Whatever is not making your blessing to manifest in my life, let it be totally taken away. Take it away, take it 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 away. Let it be totally taken away. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus. 
I am your child. Use my life to define your blessings for all eyes to see. I want you to talk to the Lord. Use my, eyes, my life to define your blessing for all eyes to see in the name of Jesus. Use my life to define your blessings for all eyes to see in the name of Jesus. Use my life to define your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 to 15, as we round up. He said, having wiped out the handwriting of requirement that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made what? He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. He made an open show of them. He has destroyed it. We are going to tell the Lord, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, blot any curse. That is still speaking in my life, speaking in the life of my children, because they have been taken to the cross. Father, they have been taken to the cross. In the name of Jesus, they have been taken to the cross. Therefore, blot it out, whatever, oh God, Father. Blot it out, whatever is not of you, Father, blot it out. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. Thank you for bringing us to this communion table. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please get your elements as we partake of the communion. I want to stand on this word of God because even the communion table, the communion, uh, coming to the communion to break the cup, we are, uh, to break the bread, it is what? It is a blessed cup. And it is a blessing we receive from the table. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14 to 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14 to 16. He said, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from adultery. I speak as to wise men. Judge you what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless. Is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? Of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break. Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? I want you to read this passage carefully and pay attention to it and the use of the word as you partake of this communion table. The cup that contains the wine, as you know, symbolizes the emblem of the blood, and it is said to be the cup of blessing. Amen? Amen. When you put water into a cup, what do you call it? You call it a cup of water. Is that not so? A cup of water. And when you take it, you say, I took water. The person didn't say the blessed cup of water. If it had said the blessed cup, it is the cup, but it says the cup of blessing. Amen? Amen. The cup of what? Blessing. blessing. So therefore, when we come to the communion table, we are coming to take what? Blessing. Amen? Amen. We are coming to take blessing. Blessing is anything that is positive, uplifting, and is life-enhancing. Blessing is anything that releases your future to happen. While a curse that you are talking about... Is anything that stops your future from manifesting. But we are receiving this cup of blessing today to put an end to any curse that is hindering our future from manifesting. Amen. Amen. So verse 16 says, as we partake of the communion, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? This is a communion of the blood of Jesus. So communion means... Sharing and fellowshipping with Christ himself. How healthy is the body of Christ? Amen? Amen? Do you agree with me that the body of Christ is perfectly sound? So we are sharing fellowship with him of his perfect and sound health and the blessings that comes with it. His body is totally healthy. That there is no trace of sickness in his body for one day. <laughs> so if you regularly take communion, I want you to know that your body cannot be, cannot constantly be knocked down, constantly be knocked down by the devil. I don't think there is any drug that is as strong as communion. So tonight we are going to partake of the blessing and it will speak in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you for the provision of the blessing in the communion. 
we step into it to obtain this blessing through Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Partake of the communion table. And the Lord will bless us. And the blessing from this table will be yours. It will manifest in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. For I receive from the Lord the, the Lord the night. For I receive from the Lord that which was also delivered to me, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. I said, Take it. This is my blood which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat the bread. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till it comes. In the name of the Father, Amen. in the name of the Son, Amen. and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's drink the wine. I want you to begin to appreciate the Lord for giving you opportunity to come to this blessed table. And as you appreciate him, begin to tell him the blessing that you came for on this table today. Tell him the blessing. You have read the scripture. The cup of the blessing. What is that blessing? Name it. Name it. Name it. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory for this great opportunity. We magnify you because you are in charge doing what only you can do. By the blood of Jesus, I declare today that whatever is not of you, depart from our life totally in the name of Jesus. We take in what you brought into our lives in the name of Jesus. Every blessing we receive today becomes permanent in our lives. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Offering time. Today is the last day of our fast, and we are coming to our Father to bless him with our offering. And surely he will receive our offering in Jesus' name. Amen. He will receive our offering in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have come to honor God with our offering. Uh, I want you to put your offering together. Psalm 20, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 20, verse 1 to 3. We all know the scripture, the Lord bless you in the day. Psalm 20, verse 1 to 3. He said, may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the Lord of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt offering. Tonight, as you package your offering to give it to the Lord, I declare that the Lord will remember this offering as a memorial for you in the name of Jesus. Finishing this fasting today, you have not come to God empty. You are not returning empty in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for opportunity to give. As we give this offering, Father, we pray, honoring you, let it be acceptable to you. Accept us also in the name of Jesus, and let this offering be a memorial that will become a voice to speak before you on our behalf. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. So we are giving our offering. Abraham, blessings are mine. Abraham, blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the evening. Abraham, blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Abraham, blessings are mine. Hallelujah, Abraham, blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning, blessed in the evening. Abraham, blessings are mine. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for opportunity to pray, to share the word, to partake of the communion, and to give out of all that you have given to us. For we owe nothing, but you gave us everything. And Father, 
we pray that in the name of Jesus, as we end this fasting today, every issue of concern in the life of your people, let it come to an end in the name of Jesus. As we end this fasting today, Lord, I declare that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you will also show to us greater revelation through you in the name of Jesus. By this revelation today, no longer, O oh God, Father, we will see ourselves as some blessed people in the name of Jesus. It will be ringing in our heart that we are blessed. And your blessing will override, will overshadow and take over everything in our life that is not representing blessings. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I want to say thank you for coming and God bless you. Can we share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom. <laughs>